first of all, um, can everybody hear me? Is there any problem with the here? I, I, I have to tell you, uh, and, because I, I have almost a neurotic uh, uh, worry about the sound. I'll tell you why. Uh, believe it or not, uh, in another lifetime, I wanted to be a, a rock and roll star. I'm not joking. <laughs> and I'm not, I have a disc on, on you know, available once in a while. Actually, somebody buys it online at a site called cdbaby.com. I was like, uh, in those days, was uh, some of the people would remember what a folk singer, okay? Nowadays, uh, nobody even remembers what that is. But like Bob Dylan, this was my uh, dream at one time. And um, in any case, I was a solo act, just, just voice and guitar. And what I used to do is I used to go, anytime I would see a solo act, I would go, I would, uh, I would go see and look and watch for their technique. One time I saw an incredible country singer. And this was maybe the best, uh, one of the best, you know, one man, one guitar acts I'd ever seen. After the show, I went to go talk to him, I wanted to get his advice. Anyway, it turns out the guy had been uh, traveling around eight years on the, what you call, I guess, the AAA country circuit for eight years, living in the back of like a UPS type truck. That was his home for eight years. He never quite made it to the big time. I don't know why, he was incredible. Um, so I asked him for advice, and okay, this is, I promise, this is what he said to me. He looked at me and he goes, Son, your show begins and ends with sound system. That was it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what he took. This eight years living in a truck, that's what he had. This is the still twist. Now, the fact is, it may, sound, just, it may sound superficial. However, I found that that rule as a performer was absolutely consistent. Okay? You know, lousy sound system, lousy show. Great sound system. Lousy show. So, uh, at any rate, that's why I'm not up here with the guitar. Uh, but, uh, at any rate, if you go, if you end up going to my website, you'll see, you can click, you'll get, there's a link to my, to buy my disc if you, you know, if you're so uh, inclined. Um, uh, I want to thank Rabbi Karsh very much for, uh, did, he, did he go out? But at any rate, you'll tell him that I thanked him. I want to thank Mrs. Begon, her son was nice enough to set this up. And uh, you have a wonderful son, by the way, I'm sure you know that, but it's always nice to hear. He really is. I don't have to even pretend. He is a wonderful guy. <laughs> um, okay. The subject that we're going to be talking about, uh, belief in God, particularly from a scientific point of view, happens to be, uh, whether people admit it or not, is it's always, I have found, it's always churning around in people's uh, hearts and minds and intellects and souls, etc. Uh, there was a, I'm going to mention it a little more specifically during the talk, but there was an article in the Huffington Post, which is, a, for those of you who don't know, is a very popular online newspaper. What did, uh, uh, she just, Ariana Huffington just sold it for how much? A $200 million, very popular site. In any case, so um, uh, there was a Rabbi Jacobs from Asia Tower, New York, who wrote an article basically based on some of the material that he got from my book. He mentioned my name several times. And uh, the, uh, uh, the religion section of the Huffington Post is not the most well-read part of the book, of, the, of, that, of that website. It happened within a few days. It had, uh, there were 8,000 people had posted it to Facebook and said they liked it. Over 6,000, almost 7,000 people commented on it. There were some very, very um, uh, people, you, you see this, people's passions came out both ways, who said that, ah, oh, you're crazy, crazy creationist, crazy fundamentalist, you're anti-science, and then, of course, you have people from the other side, yes, you know, this is what we need, this, etc. At any rate, this is a subject that moves people. Uh, when Maimonides starts off his great work called the Mishnah Torah, the beginning of the first words are, Yesod ha-yesodot va-omud ha-chachmo, the foundation of all foundation. And the pillar of all wisdoms is to know that God exists. That's what he says. It's the beginning of everything. And whether it's on people's, whether we're thinking about it consciously or not, when the subject comes up, it moves us. We understand this is what it's all about. And, and, the, and the clearer that we know God exists, or the fuzzier it is, makes a big difference to us. So anyway, I want to make sure that it's understood. I don't know uh, everyone here in the audience what you believe, what you don't believe. But what I do want to make sure you understand is what we're not going to be talking about tonight. And sometimes this confuses the issue when, when these discussions and these kind of talks um, 
uh, take place, particularly, like for instance, I spoke at uh, several universities to the Secular Atheist Society of the, of the college, okay? So it's very important to make sure you focus and to find exactly what you're going to be talking about. We're not talking about here tonight how many days did God create the world? We're not talking about this, the story of Genesis or Bereshit. Is it true? Is it not true? That it happened exactly the way it said. Uh, we're not talking about how old the universe is. We're not talking about did God split the Red Sea or not. That's not the subject tonight. We're talking about can life begin without a creator or not? That's the issue. Obviously, my point of view is that if you approach it scientifically, forget about whether you read the Torah or whether you have any particular... Uh, religious beliefs, uh, or, or, or organized religion, if you will, you're going to come to the conclusion, if you're a rational truth seeker, that the only explanation for the existence of life is that there is a creator. So that's, that's what we're talking about, nothing else. So let's not confuse it with, with any other of the issues uh, that have to do with belief in God or not belief in God. And when, if, at the end, when we have questions, that's the topic that we're, we're going to really be discussing. Now, um, Obviously, uh, I'm an Orthodox rabbi, so I mean, I believe in all these things. I do believe that God split the sea. I believe that you know, God spoke at Monsani. But that's, in a certain sense, besides the point. You can believe in God and believe in creation without necessarily you know, believing in the Torah or believing in any other particular religion. The book is written not, not to, as an advocate, to advocate Judaism. The book is written to advocate belief in God, belief in soul, belief that, the, that what, what, what uh, a human being's life revolves around is seeking this transcendence, seeking transcendent morality, transcendent purpose, etc. Okay? Not particularly about Judaism. The concept of God is a Jewish God, but the, the, uh, it's not pushing people, or it's not persuading people to go in that particular path. In any case, keeping those ground rules in mind so we can kind of proceed. Now, there's another very important point. We're going to be talking about origin of life, some of the science involved. The question is, uh, why uh, am I qualified as a rabbi to get up here and talk about this subject? It should be... Uh, or an organic chemist, a microbiologist. Why do I have any authority to get up here and speak about this subject? And the answer to this is it's a very important question, and, I, and the answer is even more important. The answer is that um, I don't believe that the essential issue is the science. The science, as we'll see, is relatively straightforward. I think that the real issues having to do with origin of life and the problems that people have believing in a creator does not have to do with science at all. It has to do with the existential realities of human nature and human behavior. And hopefully those are subjects which uh, conceivably could be within the purview of a rabbi. So keeping all that in mind, let's proceed. <clears throat> 